Hello everyone and welcome to this week's uh, video tutorial for English commentary. Uh, this match was played in 1995. Red was Grandmaster Zhang Chiang, Black was Master Liu Xin from Guangdong. And this is quite an interesting match. Uh, I hope you've, uh, you will enjoy it as I have. So without further ado, let us begin. Grandmaster Zhang Chiang started with the pot opening. Liu Xin countered with the standard cannon. And he chose, Grandmaster Zhang Chiang chose to chose to play the left uh, central cannon instead of the right one. And black countered with the opposite direction cannons. Now, this is one of the sound replies or one of the major variations of this opening system, the pawn opening versus thundering cannon opening system. Now, now one thing about this opening. Now, if instead black played e7 plus 5 or h8 plus 7, Red will be able to play h8 plus 7 and because the pawn was already pushed, this horse will be able to move. Uh, so what I mean is, that, let's say for example if black played this move, Red will be able to push, advance his horse forward. Now because the red pawn had already been advanced and the cannon was not protecting the horse, so the effects or the efficiency of this cannon would be greatly decreased. So that is why c8 equals to 5 is considered to be one of the better counters as uh, black would try to pin the uh, try to attack the central pawn and force the horse if the horse moved it would be sh it would have to shoulder the responsibility of protecting the central pawn and the efficiency of efficiency of this cannon would be greatly increased all right developed his right horse the foul chariot and at this point in time black chose to draw first blood by pushing the spawn forward now if black captured check and a double check and black will probably go on to win with ease so p7 plus 1 this was a bait and that was why black chose to play uh, h8 plus 9 now, uh, there, there were also two other variations that were discussed in the uh, book. What was R9 plus R9 equals to 8 to develop this left flank? Now, Red would immediately try to form a blockade, compressing the space that the chariot can move. Black would push the pawn forward, chase the, the elephant, would chase the cannon away. And Red will still command the initiative after a few rounds. Now, of course, there are many other complicated variations among here, but uh, the general idea is, would be that Red would still have the initiative if R9 equals to 8 plus 1 were played. Now, uh, if R9 plus 1 were played to develop the chariot as a ranked chariot, Red will probably go with uh, H8 plus 7. Black would move the chariot across the palace. Red would advance the cannon to attack, pre preparing to uh, capture the central pawn. And after developing the chariot, Red would now command the initiative. So there will be not many good spots for this chariot to move, uh, and Red will slowly be able to increase his ini initiative in the game. So that is why. Uh, PC plus 1 is considered to be one of the better counters or variations in this particular situation. And of course, Frick cannot capture the pawn, so he played H8 plus 9. Okay. I'll erase this. Okay, P3 plus 1. Now it would seem that Black would have the advantage as uh, he would have a pawn so early across the river, so early in the game. But uh, this pawn will be vulnerable to attack, and often this issue will be a uh, major uh, issue or factor that black must consider. Black red develops his left flank, and black de developed his left chariot as a rank chariot. Now this move, the idea behind this move was to push the traverse the chariot across the board to lend support to this flank. Another commonly seen variation would be to play h2 plus 1. 
Uh, with my Blackwood, I uh, slowly patiently wait for the opportunity to develop his pieces, but the pace of the game would have slowed down considerably. A prophylactic move. Uh, uh, if need be, Rick would sacrifice the elephant without delivering a check, so th uh, this would also provide offer some defense against Red's potential attack from the center. Now, Black advanced in this spot, Black advanced the cannon to the riverbank. Now, the main idea behind this move was that he was prepared to play c3 equals to 7 to attack the horse since the advisor had already raised. If the horse moved, a possible smother cannon checkmate would be present. Now, this would also be a, a natural or seemingly nat uh, a natural move to make in this situation. But uh, Red Black did not anticipate Black's brilliant counter later on. Now, in the past, R9 equals to 4 was played. And Red will counter with C2 plus 4. The Cross River Bank Chariot. P3 plus 1, R1 plus 1. Now, this would uh, be a very complicated and sticky situation for both colors. Uh, but because of the compressed space that uh, black would have, uh, uh, black, black would have an uh, usually have an easier time ahead. So in this move, this would be the move uh, that was that would actually be questionable later on because now red will start a very a series of uh, very brilliant counters. P3 plus one to prevent C3 C3 goes to seven. C2 plus 3 and C2 plus 3 to push the cannon to Black's River Bank. Now this is quite a in, uh, very interesting move. Now with this move, Black was actually targeting a very unobvious uh, weakness in Black's formation. Now this was more of a positional play and um, it's the essence of this move. Now, because of playing, because this was split, Black cannot push the pawn forward. Neither can it move the horse to the riverbank, or the cannon will be lost. So at this point, Black played R9 equals to four. Uh, faced with this overwhelming pressure, now this was uh, the best that Black could do in this situation. Now th there were many other f there are five four other variations that were discussed. The first would be R1 equals to 2, whereby Black would try to trade chariots, which of course Red would do. Black Now Red would push the pawn forward, threatening to gain material. And Red would draw first blood. The horse would be in trouble if it moved. Bam! Red would capture the central pawn with his central cannon. Uh, E3 plus 1 was also not viable because we would now push R2 plus 4, preparing to put again push the pawn across the river and uh, target the pieces over here. We will counter, capture material, and as can be seen, the riverbank chariot will now be a menace that uh, Black would have trouble dealing with. And once the chariot was here, it was it will be vulnerable to attacks by the red cause. And the red could simply play. Red would simply play R4 equals to six to capture the elephant by force and prepare to target a storm and attack over here. So black loses the elephant, which would be quite a big deal in this situation. C3 equals to one <coughs> to try to provide uh, to find some protection for this cannon was also discussed. Red will immediately play C8, R8 plus 6, preparing to play R8 equals to 7. Now H3 plus 4. Black could, uh, Black could uh, retreat his um, chariot. Now R9 equals to 4. If R9 equals to 4, Red will now offer to trade away the Black's uh, clan cannon, and Black could the position of black pieces would be still in a terrible situation. Black would still be in a passive state of things. Now if h4 plus 5, red would attack with h3 plus 5, chase the dislodge the black cannon. Again threatening to capture the cannon. The black cannon cannot move or this would be a check. 
and as can be seen, the black, the red horse will now be free to move. Not only will it attack this cannon, red will be also prepared to play. Um, P9 plus 1 to gain more material. Now, and the horse will not have to worry about any attacks by the black chariot because it will be protected. And it, it could also capture the ca cannon and we would have a winning position right here, right now. H4 plus 2, what about H4 plus 2? If this were played, again, Red will simply retreat his horse in a very brilliant manner. Now, the horse cannot advance because these two intersections are guarded by the Red Horse. And again, Red will be prepared to play P9 plus 1. Now, if Red enforced a, a, a period of material, this horse will become a major issue uh, later on because uh, once the pawn was uh, read off, or for example with the e7 plus 9, uh, black would lose the horse and probably the game. So again, c3 equals to 1 to find some protection for the cannon would not be a possibility. Now what about c3 equals to 5, preparing to trade material. If this were done, of course, red would refuse. He will now threaten the horse, which cannot move over here because the cannon has guarded this file, ah, uh, this rank, sorry. And Black would have to find ways to deal with this horse. And there's always the possibility of p5 plus 1, etc, etc. So Rick would have a significant advantage. Hence, in the actual game, Master Liu Xing played r equals to 4. p3 plus 1, ball attempt. After trading cannons, Red would now have also gained a pawn that had crossed the river. And uh, Black tried to be aggressive by playing h3 plus 4. Now, Black advanced the horse. The th idea, main idea was to capture the central pawn and allow Black to gain a central pawn, uh, hoping to uh, offer some form of offense. Now, would R4 plus 4 be a good idea to protect the pawn? Red would simply try to trade away material. Black would offer another trade of chariot, so this would be a 4 chariot rendezvous. R2 equals to 6. And after trading away material, once this horse was free, uh, the red pieces would be developed and very active. Hence, H3 plus 4. Uh, was the was perhaps the better move that was in, made in the game and r4 plus 4 was not a good idea because we would still come out on top so red, now red will try to chase the pawn away h4 plus 5 h3 plus 5 and after trading away the after trading away, Ray would have, Black would have gained the pawn advantage, 1, 2, 3 pawns versus Black's 5 pawns. However, Black's pieces are scattered and this horse was particularly vulnerable. So Red would immediately dislodge the Black cannon, forcing it away. And Black would now eliminate the Black pawn. I want equals to 2. Arm plus two, sorry, Black tried to develop his left chariot, even offering his elephant uh, as uh, even offering his elephant as bait, hoping to go for the iron box checkmate. Now, uh, the idea was the idea behind this move was to, as mentioned earlier, was to go for the iron box checkmate and thus force uh, Red to try to trade away the central cannons, whereby Black could uh, relieve some pressure. Uh, on the on his spot, uh, uh, black could also consider playing. Uh, however, uh, red could also consider playing r equals to three, and both moves would give red the advantage. Now the red pawn will make its presence known on the board, threatening to checkmate with the iron belt. On the only move for red would be to play r8 equals to 5. After trading material, again, black tried to simplify the situation by trading uh, chariots. Of course, black red would not be willing to do so because this pawn was now prepared to make mischief. 
Now Black retreated his Black retreated his horse, trying to move it to safety. And Black captured the elephant decis decisively. Now uh, one might wonder would HR5 plus 2 have been better because not only would uh, Red further um, erase his pawn deficit, he would also pin the black horse. However, if this were done, Black would simply offer a trade of material and this elephant would be safe for the time being. So Red, Black would still be able to resist Red, Red's attack and it was not as good as simply capturing the elephant for this time being. So, uh, let's say in the match, uh, Black continue with R-2, protect the central pawn and also attack the Red Chariot. Black moved his chariot to safety. And again, Black tried to solidify his defense to allow his horse to move for further development. P2 plus 3, the pawn will now attack. R4 equals to 9. And Black again advanced his chariot to threaten the horse. Now this move will serve two purposes. Uh, not only would it prevent, avoid Black's potential R4 plus 2 attack to trade uh, discovered attack to trade chariots it would also uh, this move will also lay the foundations for further attack now black tried to salvage his situation p3 plus 4 trying to push the pawn forward uh, sorry to traverse the pawn p5 plus 1 and of course red will want to keep his pawn alive and once this pawn were able to charge for black would be in all sorts of trouble. And black tried to uh, eliminate the weakness of the centroid horse. And red countered very agilely and versatile, uh, very, in a very versatile manner with this move. Now, this will allow the black pawn, a uh, red pawn, to uh, penetrate red's defense because now black red would be threatening the black horse. Now, if uh, red casually played p4 plus 1, let's say p4 plus 1, black would have forced a trade of material. And after trading material, the elephant would be still protected from the pawn. So, black's attack, uh, sorry, red's attack would be grinded to a halt. And the pawn advantage over here, despite having a, despite having being two elephants down, black's pawn of advantage should become a significant factor, and it will be too early to see uh, to tell who would have to uh, to tell the outcome of the game. So a very agile play by red, uh, threatening the horse directly. Red would now push uh, advance his uh, pawn a uh, horse to the riverbank. Black would take red would take the opportunity to advance the pawn. Uh, into the palace. Black again, well now Black was not desperate and tried to and tried to trade material. Of course Red will have none of it. He would rather have Black in a vice in a vice <coughs> in a grip. Now the pawn had reached the elephant's eye, which is one of the most uh, ideal spots to maneuver the pawn to. And black sacrificed the black pawn, uh, black sacrificed his pawn to try to slow down red's offensive. Now, if he tried to play r4 equals to six, check. And now, at this point in time, black would only have a single a single elephant advisor guard remaining. Now, this is a very vulnerable situation for black because red would be prepared to play let's say r4 equals to seven, r7 plus five for the checkmate. So once there's only sing uh, one single elephant advisor, a single guard, it will be very hard uh, to defend against red's black chariot, uh, red's two chariots. So red tried to slow uh, black's attack. So black tried to slow red's attack by sacrificing the pawn. Of course, red was none of it, threatening to play. Uh, R4 equals to 2, threatening to play R2 plus 5 for the checkmate. Forcing black to retreat before capturing the 
black pawn. So in this manner, Red would not only be able to maintain his offensive, he would have eliminated, eliminated black's uh, pawn. Black would be forced to protect his elephants to free his horse to do to move. And in the match, suddenly Brit played too passively. Uh, instead, he could have gone for R9 plus 7 for a beautiful attack. Uh, let's say if R9 is 7 was split, Brit would play H7, R7 equals to 6, threatening the black chariot. Check. And again, black would be left with a single guard. And the red uh, chariot would now capture one of the pawns for attack. Now this would be much a much faster road to victory. Uh, if our four equals our four equals two was played to threaten the black uh, sorry to threaten the red horse. Again a check. And red will now advance his chariot. So these two pieces would tie up. Uh, black's three pieces and there's only one elephant guard left so uh, red would have a waiting position he could play r7 equals to six push the horse forward etc etc so r5 equals to eight was played which was too passive and gave black a chance back into the game as can be seen because of this move uh, the endgame situation dragged long or dragged forever so, 7 plus 6, check, a single elephant guard. And now, we try to move the horse to attack. Try, force, try, to forcing, try to force a trader material. Again, attacking the elephant. For the defense. Now, this is a very nice move, retreating the horse, preparing to go for the tiger-headed horse. Then Black tried to counter with a tiger-headed horse of his own for defense. Now both colors went at it, but finally, after much maneuvering, this black pawn was finally captured and the presence of a red pawn that could cross the river in this situation, especially when black had only one single uh, uh, single guard left, single advice elephant guard left, would mean that red would basically be ensured of victory. Now this would be the final uh, knife in black's heart. So, And at this point in time, seeing that the pawn was prepared to cross the river and it was filled out not to prevent it, uh, finally, uh, Red would, uh, this was this would be the winning situation. Uh, there were still many moves, but uh, the rest of the moves have been omitted in my commentary. And this was when uh, Black finally Black would lose. So as can be seen. Played too passively. Oh, sorry. Uh, Black played too passively, and things would have been. He could have achieved victory much faster. So, a quick recap. We'll do it as from the eyes of Black. Uh, pawn opening, thundering cannon, uh, opposite direction cannons. Now note. Red played c8 equals to 5, not c2 equals to 5, so this horse will be protected. Now, uh, there's a whole world of difference between moving which cannon. Now, black tried to draw first blood. And r9 plus 1 for very aggressive, uh, proactive approach. And this move was, it would seem natural to do so, preparing to play c3 equals 7. But once the cannon was moved, black's uh, formation would be greatly weakened. And black red would counter it very nicely with this uh, seemingly unusual move. Now, r9 equals to 4 was 
perhaps the best uh, option for black in this situation r1 equals to 2 e3 plus 1 or e3 plus 3 etc were not all not viable again this would be red's uh, very powerful technical combination check sorry uh, actually material and h3 plus 4 to develop the host to try to uh, try to attack further now this pawn will become a major threat as can be seen this pawn will, uh, one of its obvious targets will be this horse but as for this pawn it cannot advance it cannot move and this horse is relatively safe so that this pawn will be of better quality than this the black pawn um, black attacks trade of material Trying to dislodge the, the black cannon, and red managed to eliminate the black pawn. Now, uh, this would mean that black would have wasted two moves pushing the pawn across the river, and red's uh, initiative would slowly grow from here onwards. And the issue of this red pawn would still have yet to be rectified, and the red pawn will now start to do damage. A force of trade of cannon, so this would be an iron ball checkmate. Black tried to simplify the situation and black played nicely with uh, capturing by capturing the elephant in this situation instead of um, playing r5 plus 2 because black would have the opportunity to trade chariots. Okay, this was Black's attempt at a discovered attack. Remove the chariot away, the elephant will be capturing or be threatening the red chariot. Black uh, tries to gain a pawn advantage. And once the this once the chariot was here, Black Red was prepared to advance and Black tried to move the horse over here. One possibility would be to go for a fork. And Red responded very nicely with R4 equals to 3. Advancing the pawn and get finally getting to the elephant's eye. Now, the threat of this uh, pawn will be similar to that of a chariot because the king will not be able to move and there's always the threat of a checkmate. R5 plus 1, Black was forced to sacrifice the pawn, but Red will not accept, threatening the checkmate. This would be a very nice intermediate move, forcing the Black Chariot back before capturing the pawn. Now it was at this time, Red played a little bit too cautiously and with R5 equals to 8. If he had played on H9 plus 7, things would have been much, uh, would have went faster down here for Black. And as can be seen, the match dragged on. And at this point in time, Red's major issue will be to try to eliminate pawn and get this pawn across the river. And we can see that all these moves over here will focus around this topic. So after much maneuvering, check, treat, threatening the elephant. Turning the horse again. Going for uh, this would be uh, an attempt to gain trade material. Black would move, attack the black pawn. Tiger headed horse. Trade of material. Black would have none of it. <coughs> again. Uh, Black was forced to retreat so that if Red delivered Jack, he could retreat the elephant. It's as he would be protected by the horse. And Red switched attack to the other flank. And finally captured the pawn to ensure winning situation. Now the game was still dragged on for many many moves. The rest of the moves have been omitted. But the general idea was that once the pawn was able to get across the river, uh, Black would be all sorts of trouble. So, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, slightly long video of this uh, slightly long game. 
Now, if you like the work that I've been doing, please do subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Thank you.